Welcome back again to Fantastic Furniture Painting. This is the last YouTube clip, clip in uh, the June series for Fantastic Furniture Painting. And I want to teach you more background skills and more decorating skills to have in your library of tricks when you're painting furniture. So we're going to talk about Paisley's today and a couple of other techniques that will help you with your backgrounds and your decorative touches to your painted piece. Let's start with Paisley's. Um, Paisley's build on a technique you already know how to do, and that's dotting. Actually, two techniques. If you've drawn your diamond shapes to create a trellis, then you have already have the foundation for laying out your Paisley's as a background. So let's look at this quick clip of Paisley's and then I'll show you some examples of what they look like when they're finished. Here we go. Let's paint some Paisley's. Paisley's are basically a teardrop shape and they're going to be painted facing two ways. So one Paisley will be facing that way and then your next row of Paisley's will be facing the other way. You can see I'm not being too fussy about the shape because again, dots are the cure-all. The dots are going to make these all look pretty much the same. So there's your first step. You want to paint your teardrop shape. Second step, of course you would let that dry, is to use an eyeball dot and paint a dot bottom of the paisley. Third step, sorry for the camera jumping just a little bit here, your third step is going to be to place a small dot at the bottom of that. Next, this is again the great cure-all, you're going to take your dotting brush and dot all around that paisley. And so on. And finally, what you're going to do is to give that paisley a tail, which will look like so. So here's the grid you would prepare and if you feel it's necessary, lay out the direction that your paisleys are going to go in. And here's what a, the pattern looks like in progress uh, without the little tails on the end of each paisley. And here's the chair that I like to call the chair that started it all. This is what they look like in a pattern. I think you can see it's very effective. And here is the detail on the chair. The next technique I want to talk to you about is a scallop technique. This is a technique of half circles that build upon each other to create a really interesting background. Um, some of my painters from previous classes have taken uh, big pots, these big uh, ceramic, actually they're not ceramic, they're composite pots that we bought at Christmas tree shop and laid out this scallop pattern in black and white around the pot. I'll show you a photograph of one. Um, it's a very good technique. Um, I've used it on pots, <clears throat> excuse me, and I've also used it on something that uh, I call a picket fence fish, and I will show you an example of that. So they're very effective in black and white, and they're also very effective in multiple colors. So here's a quick clip on scallops, and I will follow that with a few examples. Last week, Caroline shared a pattern that she had used on a patio pot using half circles. And since we uh, covered the rope using a pattern, you're going to use that same pattern to create a row of half circles. And that's how you'll start your pattern going up. You're then going to place your pattern midway between the two circles on the previous row and keep drawing until your pattern fills up 
the space that you're painting. So then to create the nice black and white effect that Caroline had on her pot, you've got a row of black and you see the semicircles automatically create that nice kind of fan shape. This is pretty simple but very effective, especially in black and white. The only thing you need to remember is, for example, if you're using this pattern on a pot, you have to make sure that you make your semicircle pattern the right size so that you get the right number of circles around the base of the pot and then things will take care of themselves as you go up in rows. So quickly you'll get the effect and hopefully Caroline will show us her patio pot one more time. If not, I think there's enough here so that you can see what kind of an overall effect this has as a pattern. As you can see on this pot, the scallops are very effective in black and white. You just need to measure around the base of the pot to make sure you have enough room. And here's what they look like in multicolors on a picket fence fish. And if you'll notice in the detail, what we've done with this one is we've dotted the tops of each of the scallops as we've gone along. The next technique I'd like to cover is not a background, it's more a decorative touch. And that is a floral called a Mary Englebright Rose. I'm not really sure whether it's a Mary Englebright Rose or not, but my mentor uh, and longtime friend, Jenny, Boylan, who used to teach uh, furniture painting, called it a Mary Englebright Rose. So this is something that's a little more decorative rather than a repeatable pattern. And I, I'm going to show you three video clips as this takes a little time to prepare. And I hope you'll practice this before our next class. So here we go, Mary Englebright Rose. So here's a very simple flower that you can get a lot of use out of. Um, my former mentor and teacher, uh, Ginny Boylan, used to call this a Mary Englebright rose. This is the top of a little box I'm painting. What you're going to do is take chalk or a pencil and create three sort of loose heart shapes. Then you're going to go from the indent on one heart space up, make a slight indent, and meet at the indent of the next heart. Again, up, indent a bit, and meet at the indent of the next heart. Up, a little bit of a, of a dip, and meet. You may want to add a couple of leaves and then I'll show you how to paint it. So here you have your rose. You can paint the rose one color or you can use two. For purposes of today, I'll use two. I've used a, a blazing orange and a hot pink on other parts of my box. So I'm just gonna start by painting the orange. And you can see this is probably going to take a couple of coats, but you'll get the idea. Please remember I am doing this wet, but of course you're going to wait until your paint dries before you add your second coat. And then I'm going to follow my blazing orange with my hot pink. Okay. 
Oops. <laughs> A little orange in there. Picked up the wrong color. That's not good. Right now it looks a little blobby, but what we're going to do is define some of those petals and also we'll finish it off by putting three dots in the middle. So here's your Mary Inglebright rose or flower with a couple of coats of paint on it and the leaves done. Let's create a little bit of definition around the petals. You don't need to outline every piece of the petal, just enough to give the idea that you switched colors from the orange to the hot pink. So that gives a little definition. And we can do the same thing to the leaves. Maybe give them a little, just a hint of a vein. And the last thing we're going to do, I mean, I'm getting my, getting my, my paint mutched already. I'm famous for that. The last thing you want to do is to give the flower, a center. Done. And here's an example of a group of Mary Englebright roses on the top of a small box that I've painted. So just to review, you've learned three new techniques today. One is paisleys, and your paisleys are building on the grid that you learned how to do in preparation for a trellis. You've also learned how to do scallops, which are a great background, uh, textured, decorative effect. And you've learned how to do a Mary Bright Rose. I hope you practice again before class and we'll continue with more techniques in class so that you're building your library of skills. So thank you for watching and I hope if there is a next Zoom session of fantastic furniture painting, you will consider joining us. Bye-bye for now.